Here we are again, ready to talk about the next module, module number nine, the extremely pivotal Supreme Court case, Plessy versus Ferguson, that set up the whole idea of separate but equal. But first, we must once again entertain our guest, Chloe. Chloe, come here. Chloe, sit, sit. Would you like to eat? Okay. So we'll get started now with our lesson after once again talking to our very cooperative guest, Chloe. So here we are. Plessy versus Ferguson. You say, well, what is Plessy versus Ferguson? Well, again, it was a Supreme Court case that set up that idea of separate but equal. It all started with the trains. Train cars. That's what they call these things here. They're all train cars. Well, they had these passenger cars back here. That's where people would sit. Now, this whole idea of separate but equal, starting with the trains, well, you'll see it in just a second, but it said you have to have one section of the train car for whites and a different section for African Americans. And, well, they could be separate, but they're supposed to be equal. But did that ever really work? Eh, I don't know. So in 1890, the African American community down there in this Louisiana town decided that uh, they wanted to challenge that, that law, that law that had started in 1890 that said that uh, the train cars could be separated based on race because you got to stop and think, are they really going to be equal? Because it would seem to me that possibly one of the groups, the one that controls the money, the white uh, group, would have not as good of conditions for the African American facilities as in train cars or waiting rooms, things like that. So they went looking for a person to violate the law on purpose, and they found a man who was one-eighth African-American, Homer Plessy. And he agreed to go violate the law, and everybody knew this, even the railroad car company, because they didn't like the law because they were afraid of losing money when African-Americans decided not to ride the train cars. So he got on, refused to get off and move, and he was arrested, and then eventually went to trial. And he said, Your Honor, This law is a violation of the 13th and 14th Amendments of the Constitution. The 13th Amendment where you're treating people differently based on their race. You know, the whole thing about slavery is, uh, is no longer uh, a law, can't be. And the 14th Amendment said we're supposed to all be treated equally by the Constitution. Well, Judge Ferguson ruled against him. Fined him 25 bucks, but he immediately appealed, meaning... He went to the next higher level of court, and eventually it worked its way all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And on May 18, 1896, they issued with only one dissenting vote, meaning one of the nine justices voting against the main decision. They voted and said, hey, this idea of separate but equal was okay. So states could segregate, separate based on race, if they wanted to, as long as they had equal uh, places. But you stop and think, again, would the waiting rooms really be equal based on race if the white race was controlling the money that provided them? Would the train cars be equal? Would the water fountains be equal? Would the bathrooms be equal? And it developed on and on from there. And it even got to the point where back then, when people would be getting ready in a court case to give evidence, they'd have to put their hand on a Bible and swear that they were going to tell the truth. And they actually had separate Bibles for that. Got kind of silly. So, again, we've already talked several times, would the idea of separate but equal actually work? Things that were separated based on race, would they stay equal? I don't know. Now, this is another thinking question for you. Look at it. Do you think they actually would, the railroad company that is, have supported the fight against the law if it hadn't been based on money? Because a lot of times it's money that motivates people to do things. So, information sources. Let's go look at a couple websites. You can look at the address. You can pause it right here if you want to go type it in yourself. But let's go look at them. Actually, we'll look at this one. Nope, we'll look at this one. We're going to go backwards. Backwards again. Backwards once more. Ah, here we are. Boy, save the day there. So this is really interesting. This is the National Archives, 
and it has our important documents and you can see you can mouse over it and mouse back and forth you mouse to the left and it moves the document to the right this is the actual photograph of the uh, digital copy of the actual document of the ruling so it's very cool you know it's a little history thing there for you and right down here you see the actual text of the document now do you have to go read that no but in case you want to <coughs> excuse me it would be a good thing okay sorry I'm looking at the document it's just fascinating to me what can I say okay last thing we're gonna look at is these guys whoops not that guy those guys those are the Supreme Court justices that is what at that time was the Supreme Court room those are the men that made the decision and let's count them we see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine of them is the total number one of them voted against Judge Ferguson's position but the other eight voted in support of separate but equal and that became the law of land so thank you for listening when you finish this and you look at your notes one more time do not forget to end with doing the formative assessment goodbye